Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Today I was just looking through my YouTube video comments and uh, I saw one that, well, it reminded me that I've seen that question quite a few times, that comment quite a few times. So I thought I'd actually do a video this morning, try and get a quick one out, a nice one take video if we can manage it and see whether I can answer this question and head off further comments, but also probably explain myself a little bit more than I can in a few sentences online. And the question is, is solar energy free? Because in my videos, I keep referring to it as free. It feels free to me. If I drive my electric car, which sadly I don't have at the moment, then the energy I'm using comes from solar panels. I put it into the car. That doesn't cost me any money. So the cost that I record is the cost where I've had to use grid energy and paid an energy company for the energy. That's the energy I pay for. That's my fuel cost. The fuel costs for the energy that I'm using that came from the solar panels I treat that as for free. Now, is that right or is that wrong is the question, because obviously I did have to pay for the solar panels. I also had to pay for the roof that the solar panels are fitted on. I also had to pay for the house to be built. I also had to pay for the land that the house is built. I also had to pay for the mortgage. I also had to pay for all sorts of other things to get the money for the deposit to pay for the house. So it's how far down the line of paying for the stuff that provides the infrastructure for the solar energy, how much of that do you include in the cost when you're considering what you're doing with your solar energy and whether it's for free and how much it's cost you? Now, if you were just doing it as a cost justification of saying, as a project, let's buy some solar panels, let's use them for 10 years, and let's work out how much it's cost me and how much it I've got as an income from it and how much energy that I've saved and therefore work out a cost justification. Well, you know, you would in that case take into account the cost of the solar panels. But when we're considering how much energy we use to cook our meals, let's say as an example, do we include the cost of the oven? Yeah, so I'm about to cook a roast meal, let's say, and I use two kilowatts of electricity. So is that 32 pence, 16 pence a kilowatt hour? Is that 32 pence worth of electricity to cook my dinner? Or do I have to include an element of the house, the oven? All of those things that enable me to cook my dinner here, the plate, the knives and forks, do I include all of the infrastructure that goes into that meal and proportionate over the lifetime of all of those things and work it out? How far and how much detail do I go to? And the answer is you, you don't. When you're considering how much energy you're using and the cost of that energy to do something like cooking your meal, it's just the energy cost. So when you're looking at it from an energy perspective or buying energy from an energy company, why do you not include the infrastructure? But when you're considering solar panels and the benefit of them, you do feel that you have to include the infrastructure. Now, I think part of it is you've got those that are negative, that don't want to accept that solar panels are good and they do cost justify over a long period of time. So they're coming up with arguments. They're putting barriers in the way to say, ah, oh, yes, but you need to include the cost of the solar panels and the fitting cost and the scaffolding that went up. And, but then they draw a line there. They don't include the actual house and the actual roof. So it's where do you draw that line, isn't it? That's where the challenge is. And from what perspective are you looking at? If you're looking at it from the project of buying solar panels and the benefit of just that piece of infrastructure, then you could do exactly the same for any piece of electrical equipment in your home, whether it be an oven, whether it be microwaves, mobile phones. You could look at the cost benefit. Some things you're buying and they're purely a benefit to you. They're um, a pleasure, such as a television, let's say. There's no financial argument. It's all cost. There's no income. There's no benefit from it other than a pleasurable enjoyment. But with solar panels, because there is an income that comes from it, then some people seem to think that you've got to include all of the costs to work out whether it's worth having. And they sort of forget the pleasure side of it, and they forget that other infrastructure items cost money, but you don't have to try and account for them. So the way I look at it is you can't do things differently two different ways. When you're considering energy cost at home from an electricity company, if you don't include the infrastructure, then when you're considering the cost of solar energy, you can't consider the infrastructure either. My view is once you've bought it and paid for it and you haven't got any maintenance thereafter, then it is for free. So yes, I look at things very positively. I look at it as though my solar energy is for free, mostly because 
I feel it's free. The money's been and gone. I spent it a year ago, two years ago. I don't miss it. And I might not have done anything else with it. It might have just sat in the bank earning 0% because we don't get any uh, interest at the moment. So I really do feel quite well justified that I don't have to account for that money, that cost. It has just gone. If, if I wanted solar panels and I couldn't afford them and I had to finance it, then that ongoing finance cost would be visible to me and I would feel it. So because I can feel that cost, I would include the cost um, because I can see it in my bank balance going out every month. With solar panels, I can't see the cost of them because it's been and gone. I spent that money just as if it was a holiday. The money is gone, it's gone out of the bank account. And what I have now is the memory, the ongoing benefit from it. It was a decision to invest in something for your life. And those decisions and what you invest in, don't. not everything has to be apportioned over the lifelong period that that thing will last for. You don't have to do that. So yes, when you buy an electric car and you run it on solar energy, I think and I feel as though it is for free. What do you think? Do you think that anyone talking about solar energy should always include the cost? And how far down that line do they have to include the costs? Is it just the panels? Is it the fitting? Is it the scaffolding? Is it the roof itself, the tiles, the house? How much do you have to include before you're satisfied that you've included all relevant costs? And why? Why do you feel it necessary to include all of the costs of providing that piece of infrastructure when you don't think about the cost of all the other things that you have around you? I think it just gets a little bit excessive and that's why I like to keep things simple. The cost of energy from the energy company is the cost on my bill. The cost of energy to fuel my car from solar energy is only the units of energy that I actually pay for. The units of energy that I'm not paying for, the sunlight that's out here right now, I'm not paying for. But the collection device I have paid for previously. And that's done and dusted, so I'm not going to include it in calculations for how much my car is costing to run or how much it's costing me to heat my hot water at home. I hope that makes sense and uh, I hope it doesn't seem too extreme in any way. It's just how it feels to me and that's what I like to present. I prefer to present rather than, shall we say, what you'd like to hear because those negative people want me to say things like, oh, it's cost me £8,000 so far and if I work that out over the life of this, which might only be five or ten years, it might break down, then, uh, oh, it's costing me an absolute fortune to have this stuff here. And yeah, it's a big risk as well and I don't know if it's insured. If I come to sell the house, some people don't like solar panels on roofs, so my house value might have been devalued as well. It's a terrible thing, the solar panel stuff. No, it's not. <laughs> It's absolutely great. And uh, I love having the solar panels. The energy does feel free. I think it's free because what it's doing for me in my personal situation as uh, I approach retirement is my outgoings are reduced. So yes, I've bought some infrastructure. I've invested in something that's keeping my bills cheap and low thereafter. And that's what the benefit is. So there you go. That's why I think solar energy is free because you can't have it both ways. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for sharing my videos. And uh, if you haven't already, go on, click like below, give us a comment on what your thoughts are. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. More videos to come. Got a couple of thoughts on the solar things. There's an update to come as well. And uh, I'll let you know shortly, but uh, in another video perhaps. Take care, see you again soon. Bye for now. Oh, Electric car, yeah, I forgot to say, it's definitely not an MG ZS EV that I'm buying. Just thought I'd let you know. See you again soon.